Hi guys, welcome back to our super quick revision series. We all have started with activity based costing in the last lecture. So let's continue that particular series now. Now, in our first lecture, I did complete introduction or whatever we are going to be seeing in activity based costing. Most of the concepts I have touched. Now it is time to be doing the problem by problem revision. Okay. So after the concepts that I had taught last time. Okay. So our first question that we all had done was question number 10. It was just a basic question. There was nothing much except production overhead split up by departments. Whenever the overheads are given department wise, you should try to follow that information will be useful for absorption costing. Okay. So this information we all have used for absorption costing. This gave up the breakup of the overheads department wise. Okay. That was first thing. Second thing in this case, then the same 26 lakh rupees was given to us activity wise and there were two activities production scheduling machine setup. The cost driver for that we thought will be number of setups and receiving and inspecting the cost driver for that we thought will be number of purchase requisition. So therefore, we try to split up these particular costs based upon their cost drivers. Okay. Once we all did that, okay, our job was over. <coughs> now do remember, how does absorption costing work? This, both these things will be giving you BOH, department wise, then BLA, how do you find out your BLA? So therefore, it was uh, given to you, department 1 is labor intensive, department 2 is machine intensive. So therefore, uh, labor intensive, so therefore, try to follow labor R method, machine intensive, it will be machine R method. So get your absorption rate. For absorption rate, you want BOH, you want BLA, but do remember that BLA you will want for the entire department. Over here, you were given labor hours per unit. Please multiply by number of units to arrive at total labor hours. BOH, you all have got. BLA, you all have got. Divide uh, them. So, therefore, you will be getting your absorption rate. Apply absorption rate to the products. Okay. Example, over here, 11 lakh rupees was the overheads. You, find out, you found out the labor hours. You got absorption rate per labor hour. What does that figure mean? It means that whenever a product takes one labor hour, charge that much amount of overheads. That's it. Okay. So therefore, that much overheads uh, per labor hour into three labor hours. This will be the overheads to be charged to product A. Same way, we have to charge machine R rate also. So therefore, your BOH divided by the total machine hours, that will start to give you absorption rate per machine hour. Multiply that figure by four. So therefore, that will be the total as such. Okay. Once that is done, it was all over. Now, uh, when we did activity based costing, as I told, it was very simple. Take the total overheads divided by the <coughs> cost drivers that was supposed to be there. So for this will be number of setups. For this, it will be your uh, number of orders, I guess. So once you will do that, you will arrive at your BOH divided by the number of units. You will arrive at your overheads per unit. Add your prime cost to them. You will arrive at factory cost. Now that was your part first. In part second, you had to be comparing the results. So comparing means comment. So therefore, I gave you three paragraphs how to be commenting. In first paragraph, you try to be saying that uh, which products will be underpriced, which products will be overpriced. Those products which will be overpriced means those particular products which under absorption costing have got higher cost. If they have got higher cost, their pricing will also be high. These products will not have demand because our prices will be higher than that of the competitors. Okay, that is one thing. Second particular thing. Uh, in this case was that uh, those products which are underpriced ultimately will be sold at a loss or at small amount of profit margin. That was our first paragraph. Second paragraph, we try, we, we try to be saying which products have transferred their uh, overhead cost to which products. So therefore, obviously those products which are underpriced have transferred their overhead cost to those particular products which are overpriced. And lastly, our last paragraph is always all about that company should follow uh, activity based costing to find out the true product cost. Just one mindset that you should be having whenever you are trying to be commenting about all such kind of questions. You remember one small thing and that thing is that uh, <coughs> activity based costing gives you correct cost. Okay. So wherever you are trying to comment, think that absorption costing gives you wrong results. It's a wrong technique. We have tried to be proving that in the previous lecture also. Okay. Now that's it about your question number 10. I'm just trying to be uh, reading the shots. It was just a concept builder question. Under absorption costing, if overheads are given department wise, use departmental rates. Under activity based costing, the cost driver for receiving department and inspecting will be number of purchase requisitions 
and uh, machine setup will be the number of cost drivers for machine setups okay for commenting first paragraph which products will not be sold and which will be sold at a loss or profit obviously those products will not be sold which are overpriced or over costed okay and which products will be sold at a loss or small amount of profit margin which are overpriced okay so therefore sorry which are underpriced so there is one thing in second paragraph we try to be commenting which products have transferred their overhead cost to which products so therefore products which are underpriced have transferred their overhead cost to the products which are overpriced and third paragraph is just a suggestion that company should follow activity based costing to find out the true product cost okay that's it that was your question number 11 as such sorry that was your question number 10 then we started away with question number 11 Question number 11, as such, there was nothing much, but then there were three products X, Y, Z, whose quantity is given to you. Apart from that, raw material usage is given to you in units. That means one unit of X requires five units of material. One unit of Y requires five units of raw material. One unit of Z requires 11 units of raw material. Then direct material cost in this case, direct material cost in this case will be uh, 25 rupees that is given to you in the problem. 20 rupees that is given to you in the problem 11 rupees that is given to you in the problem okay now what sum did it tried to take this figure it tried to take this particular figure it multiplied both of them that will be giving you total material cost it did the same thing for y it did the same thing for z so therefore 12 lakh 38 thousand was supposed to be the total cost same way direct labor hours so therefore that was 4 by 3 2 and 1 over here okay now these are labor hours obviously per unit you multiply them by number of units and you add it up you will start to arrive at total labor hours same way you were given machine hours per unit over here you multiply by number of units you will try to arrive at total machine hours over there then direct labor cost then number of production runs that is 3 7 and 20 that will be 30 over here Number of deliveries, okay. Number of deliveries will mean how many times we deliver. Number of productions means, uh, number of production runs means number of setups. Then number of receipts are given to you. Originally in the question which was asked in exams, this data was given, but I try to hide it, okay. And then number of production orders. Now, what did I try to tell you for number of receipts? There was an asterisk over here. The company operates just in time inventory system and receives each component once per production. And each component is supplied by a different supplier. Now, in this particular case, no, over here, number of receipts means how many times you received the material. Can we say you will receive the material the number of times that you will order the material. So, therefore, we had to try to find out how many times we order or how many times we receive. In any case, both these things will be same. So, therefore, what these guys are told that we receive each component once for production and whenever we are about to set up the machines and do our production, okay, whatever material is required for that entire production run, okay. Example, for product X, it was something like this, 30,000 divided by three setups in the entire period. So, therefore, that will give us 10,000. So, therefore, we make 10,000 units of X at one time. Now, for 10,000 units of X, five different types of materials are required. So, therefore, five different suppliers must be sending me the material so whenever the machines are set up once i receive the raw material from here from here from here from here from here so therefore five times and this thing happens three times in a year so number of receipts was 15 over here that is this particular data into this particular data same way it was 5 into 7 over here so therefore 35 there was 11 into 20 over here that was nothing but 220 okay and number of production orders will mean how many times we try to change our machines based upon the requirements of the customer okay that data was given to you now all these particular costs were there setup cost obviously should be divided based upon number of setups then machining cost should be divided based upon total machine hours not machine hours per unit total machine hours receiving should be divided based upon number of receipts Packing should be divided based upon number of deliveries and engineering cost should be divided based upon number of production orders. Your engineering cost is basically that only that is the cost that is incurred to basically trying to change the machines so that the product can be produced as per the specifications of the customer. That's it. Okay. Now, once this particular thing was all over, this was in fact your activity based costing and this no actually in the question in the required part, it was not your first part, it was I guess your third part of the question or this part B of the question. Compute the product cost using activity based costing. Okay. Then what was A part 1, A part 2? A part 1 was that company currently is following absorption costing 
and absorbing all the overheads. All the overheads means 18,48,000 based upon labor hours. Your total labor hours in this particular case was 88,000. Okay. So, therefore, we took our, uh, we took our total overheads. We divided by the number of labor hours over here, that is 88,000. We came across the absorption rate, I guess that was rupees 21. 21 per labor hour we charge into 4 by 3 hours into 2 and into 1. Okay, this came to 88,000. That's it, our job was done. Now, uh, BOH divided by BLA will give you your absorption rate. Apply the absorption rate and start to arrive at your factory overheads. Do remember to add up your material cost that was over here. And do uh, remember to add up your labor cost to arrive at your prime cost. So, prime cost plus factory overheads will give you factory cost. Okay, this was your part A. In part B, you know the company thought that these overheads of receiving department, we will absorb using material handling overhead rate. That is nothing but in this case, percentage of material cost method and all other overheads we will absorb by using machine hour method. So, therefore, we clubbed these particular four expenses, divided them by number of machine hours to give you one absorption rate that will be based upon machine hours. And then in this case, this thing we divided by your material cost to find out what will be this overheads in relation to your material cost. Okay. So, we had two absorption rates. We applied it two, two times. We came across two overheads. We joined them. So, therefore, for product X and uh, X, Y and Z, we already had our material cost and labor cost before also. Okay. You add your new factory overheads to it and that is how you all got the answer. Okay. So, that was your part A whereby all the overheads are absorbed based upon labor hours. Then you had your second part, okay, whereby in this case, the overheads of the packing department, sorry, of the receiving department are recovered by using material handling overhead rate and all other, all other overheads are recovered by using, in this case, your machine R rate, okay. And then we did our activity-based costing. This was your normal question. I introduced one more aspect in this and that was nothing but EMA. Environmental management accounting is a branch whereby we try to be thinking any cost that the company is incurring for environment, okay. It could be your research and development cost. It could be in this case the running of machines. It could be the planting of trees. It could be the amount of scrap that you all generate, okay. Anything in this particular case that affects the environment, whether in a positive way or in a negative way, all those particular costs should also be distributed to the products using an appropriate basis, okay. So, therefore, in part, C of the question, no, we were given breakup of that 7,60,000 rupees, this particular figure, okay. And that breakup was as follows. Running of machines cost you this much. Planting of trees will cost you this much. Solid waste removal means the amount of waste that is generated. Then we try to be removing it, okay. And then research and development activity. So, therefore, these were the costs that was given. We were asked that try to follow activity based costing with EMA approach, environmental management accounting. So, therefore, then only one thing that we all do extra, try to find out cost drivers for these environmental costs also. So, therefore, for this, it was still your total machine us. In fact, this is not the environment uh, related cost in any case, but planting of trees was. So, therefore, that will be divided based upon number of trees that was given to you in the below paragraph. Then solid waste removal will be divided in the ratio of volume of waste generated and then research and development uh, activities which are incurred to save the environment, how to produce, so therefore the smoke is less up and so on. Okay, all those particular things will be divided by the amount of R&D hours for each and every product. That's it. Okay, so once we divided, we came across our new answers. Okay, that will be uh, giving you your BOH. Under activity based costing, there is no BLA. We directly divide by number of units to try to arrive at the answers. Okay. That was your question number 11. I'm just reading the short ones. Volume based system. Now, this thing you all can remember also means traditional costing. That is absorption costing. If ever they say no, company is following volume based system. So, volume based system means your absorption costing. Material handling overhead rate means percentage of material cost method. Okay, I guess we all know that further. Machining cost should be divided in the ratio of total machine hours, not machine hours per unit because the cost that you have been given is a total cost. Divide that in the ratio of total machine hours. Now, cost drivers of these costs are setup cost. We divide in the ratio of number of setups, machining cost, total machine hours, receiving number of receipts of material, packing cost, number of deliveries of finished goods, engineering cost, number of production orders. I discussed all these things. Planting of trees, number of trees planted. Solid waste removal, then volume of waste generated. R&D activities, R&D hours. If the company asked us to follow EMA, then we need to identify environmental related cost and find their cost driver. This will lead to the correct cost. Okay. 
Now that's it about that particular question. Okay, and then in this case, we started away with a question. There was only EMA over there and nothing else. Okay, so in this particular question, it was something like this. We make grade A, we make grade B. Okay, we have been given their selling prices that is 280 rupees and 400 rupees. So selling prices are already given to you. Now, the company has three departments, CC1, CC2, CCT, I think the full form was cost center 1, cost center 2, cost center 3 or something like say or three processes or something, okay. Now, your material cost in this particular case was 300 given you the breakup. Same way for labor cost also the breakup was given to you. Now how much of 90 rupees is going to be going to grade A that is 30% grade B was 70%. So therefore we found out the bifurcation of the material cost and labor cost for our two products. Do remember there were two products but there were three departments. So therefore product A means grade A and grade B. We tried to find out material cost and labor cost based upon this particular paragraph. And then those people had told currently company all the overheads is rupees 150 per kg and this is rupees 150 and this is given to grade A and grade B equally okay so therefore currently it is 75 rupees and 75 rupees that much is given to grade A and grade B okay so once this particular part was done your absorption costing was all over we found out the profits also so therefore your selling price minus all your costs all your costs will mean your direct material direct labor and overheads of 150 divided up into two parts one uh, 75 and 75 okay those particular things was done okay then 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 something extra was given to us okay so therefore we can be solving the question based upon the ema approach and what was that extra out of rupees 150 no 90 rupees is a cost of the incinerator which is there so incinerator is that bhatti in which the goods in in which the like you know the things are uh, heated and the smoke generates up and so on so 90 rupees was that particular cost okay jo incinerator hota hai Uska jo cost hai wo 90 rupees hai. Abhi ye jo incinerator hai is basically used for what yaar? It is basically used like you know to dispose of the waste. Jo apna waste wagera bach jata hai na wo products wagera se. Usko burn kiya jata hai before disposal. Okay. So therefore we try to be thinking. Ye jo 90 rupees ka cost hai jo 150 ke andar hai. We should not in this case try to divide it equally yaar. That should be divided based upon the amount of waste uh, that is produced and that's what was given to you over here. Grade A and grade B amount of waste that was produced was 6 tons and 9 tons. So 90 rupees we divided up in that particular ratio and for remaining 60 some had only told us will still be allocated wo equally. So once we did that we got our new cost okay. So here na ek bar part 1 solve ho gaya based upon overheads of 150 divided equally okay fir uske baad yahan par grade 2 jo hai sorry jo apna part 2 hai in this particular case you had to be doing what in part 1 no actually we have to be solving the question wo two times once based upon 150 getting divided wo equally and the other thing based upon the ema approach jo ema approach hai wahan pe 90 rupees will get divided up in what ratio in the ratio of waste generated baki jo hai will be divided to equally Ek bar wo wala kaam apna wo ho gaya tha. Then we started to realize one small thing that there are differences. And that is what was given to you and asked you in part 2. Analyze the difference in product profitability as per both the methods. Now wo wala jo part hai na. Wo wala jo part hai in this particular case. We start to be realizing this. Ki na under the EMA approach. Basically all the products will be getting their true cost. Okay. Now in this case. यहाँ पर grade one को जो cost मिला ना वो कम मिला uh, under the EMA approach और वो correct cost है और जो grade two को मिला ना वो ज़्यादा cost मिला और उसका reason बहुत simple है और उसका reason क्या है कि यहाँ पर ना waste ज़्यादा produce होता है बेटा तो ultimately grade B को ज़्यादा ही cost मिलना चाहिए ना so यहाँ पे grade two had got more amount of cost as compared to the original allocation so obviously अभी grade one का जो cost है वो कम हो गया, grade two का जो cost है वो बढ़ गया। तो grade one के लिए हम लोगों ने वो suggestion वगैरह क्या लिखा था? That if you all want, you all can try to think of uh, decreasing the selling price to some extent to try to capture more amount of market. That could be one thing. लेकिन grade two का जो है ना यहाँ पर जो cost है वो बढ़ गया। तो कोई ऐसा सोच सकता है, sir selling price बढ़ाएंगे? वो एक suggestion के तौर पे वो लिख सकते हैं, although not a very good suggestion. क्यों? क्योंकि अगर सेलिंग प्राइस बढ़ाएंगे तो पीपल माइट स्टॉप टू बाय आवर प्रोडक्ट सो देन अ लॉन्ग टर्म ऑप्शन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस विल बी दैट 
you try to reduce the amount of waste generated automatically your cost also will start to be falling okay so that will be kind of a long term sustainable approach main ek bar bas yahan pe wo pad deta hu what i have written it's a problem only with ema companies earlier used to divide the overheads equally now they are planning to follow the ema approach in ema there is a cost of a incinerator which should be divided in the ratio of amount of waste generated based upon the ema the profitability is uh, different earlier it was 15 rupees each now it comes to rupees 24 for grade 1 because no for grade a i guess okay and uh, 6 rupees for grade b i'll change these particular things okay so yahan pe what happens is that uh, grade a is going to be getting lesser cost so therefore its profitability increased by rupees 9 and whatever increase was over here the decrease was also in case of grade b so therefore in grade b the profitability had fallen down by rupees 9 because cost had increased by rupees 9 this is because more waste is generated from grade b actually and hence more cost should be given to grade b as a profitability of grade a rises we can think of decreasing the selling price to capture more amount of market for grade b the profit has fallen down by rupees 9 hence a company can think of increasing the selling price of increasing the selling price by rupees 9 but due to that demand might start to fall hence a long term sustainable approach will be to reduce amount of waste generated to reduce the product okay to uh, reduce the cost so that will be slightly a long term approach okay now that was your this particular question then uh question number 13 although exam question but one of the simplest ones that has been asked by the institute so far okay so in question number 13 what we all had seen uh all these particular cost was given your packing material cost uh packing material cost energy cost fines for release of taxes and operating cost for pollution control uh equipment all these particular costs you just had to try to allocate the products based upon a suitable cost driver there could not have been a question which could be uh, simpler than this so packing material will go down in this particular ratio your energy cost will go down in this particular ratio fines for release of toxins will go down in this ratio and this will be going down in the ratio of this particular thing once you all do that please divide by number of units you will start to get environmental cost per unit that's it okay your question number 13 was as simple as that only Question number fourteen was asked in exams, but then it is exactly similar to question number twelve. But there is one part for which you will require the theory. Okay, that was there in chapter number four. So that is one part that you will have to be doing. I hope so. You have already done this particular question as it was supposed to be done for homework. Okay, उसका जो part one, two, three वगैरह था, that was all same as whatever we all had done in question number twelve. For the theory part, you have to see your uh, theory book as such. Okay, that's it about your question number fourteen. I guess for today we shall be stopping because this was all your questions, okay, of your activity based costing with your EMA. In the next lecture, we'll try to cover up the other type of questions which you all have not touched in now. Okay, I hope that you are finding these these super quick revisions uh, quite useful, whereby we try to be revising the logics, okay, and the important points of each and every question. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.